Here is another classic case of static hedging, this time using bonds. This is what you would do if you are trying to hedge payoffs which are mostly driven by the behavior of the interest rates. Uh, for example, some more or less fixed payments that an insurance company or a pension fund uh, has to pay, uh, they may want to hedge these payments by buying bonds. All right, let's see how that works. So the main idea is to uh, compute the sensitivities of the uh, bonds of your portfolio, not just your portfolio of bonds, but also your portfolio of liabilities, or the, the payoffs you have to pay, to compute the sensitivities with respect to the interest rate, and, and then make your bond portfolio cancel, uh, if you want sensitivity zero, uh, at least initially, if you want to uh, kill the sensitivity, uh, approximately uh, cancel the sensitivity to the interest rates, you make this sensitivity close to zero. Okay, those sensitivities in the bond uh, terminology have special names. First order sensitivity is called duration and the second order sensitivity uh, is called uh, convexity. And these are so classical uh, terms that I wanted to just spend a couple of slides and explaining them although we are not really going to use them uh, elsewhere in this course. Duration. I'm going to do the, the simple case in which I'm going to assume f compounding once a year, so I don't have to worry about compounding, uh, in, the, in which case my bond price is the present value of future payments, and I don't have y over n, n is 1. The, the frequency of compounding per year is just 1, uh, and y is the yield. CI are the coupon payments, except at the very end, at capital T, it's the coupon payment plus the face value of the bond. All right, so that's uh, the expression for the bond price. And now I compute how do you, how do you compute sensitivities. Sensitivities are really mathematical derivatives with respect to uh, the vari variable uh, of interest, in this case the yield. So I'm going to compute the derivative of the price of the bond with respect to, to yield, uh, or in general, the derivative of the, pr of the whole portfolio, the value of the whole portfolio relative to the yield. Anyway, for the bond, the derivative is, well, this is like 1 plus y to the minus i, so minus i goes down, and then you get minus i plus 1 as the power, so I get 1 plus y to the i plus 1 here. That's, that's simply taking the derivatives here with respect to y, and then I'm going to factor out minus p over 1 plus y, that happens to be convenient normalization, and the remaining factor is this, I'm going to give it a name, and that's what I call duration, okay, and denoted by capital D, and this, this is called duration. So what it really is, it's, it, measures, it measures the sensitivity of, of the bond price with respect to the yield, but it has a different also interpretation. Why is it called duration? It has to do something with time. Well, if you look at it, you are really adding times of payments, which are i, uh, multiplied by these factors here. Now, if you look at those factors, uh, and if you add them up, so if I add up, I'm going to take 1 over p out, and then I add ci over 1 plus y to the i, if you, if you look at this sum, this is simply 1. Why? Uh, well, that's because of the definition of the bond price or the yield here. Uh, if I divide by p, the right-hand side is going to be equal to 1, and that's exactly what I have here. Okay, so these, f these uh, factors uh, are uh, adding up to 1, which means this is a weighted average, and they're also positive. So this is a weighted average of times of payments uh, weighted by uh, basically by present value of coupons and also normalized by the bond price. So you are, you are finding an average of the times of payments, but you put more weight on those times which pay more in terms of the present value. Okay? In fact, if you look at the zero coupon bond, uh, then uh, the only time is going to be maturity, and, and D, capital D will be equal to capital T. Duration is just going to be maturity. 
Okay, so it's an extension of the, uh, of the uh, notion of maturity, the length of the life of the bond, like the average time of payments, if you want. But in terms of hedging, really the more important imp interpretation is that it measures the sensitivity of the bond price with respect to the, to the yield. Okay, that, that's the first order sensitivity, first derivative. Now, if you want to be more, even more careful and, and hedge even more precisely, you may want to also look at the second order sensitivity and uh, uh, make, choose your bonds, your bond portfolio in such a way that both your first order sensitivity of the portfolio of liabilities and bonds together and the second order sensitivity is that they are both zero. Uh, and uh, okay, to do that, we have to take the second derivative. And that's what's called uh, convexity. Okay, so convexity is simply the second derivative of the bond price with respect to uh, yield uh, normalized by the bond price, 1 over p. Uh, <coughs> okay, so we haven't talked much about uh, uh, hedging uh, options. We are going to talk about that next. Uh, but uh, we did talk about delta, so the, the, the duration as a first derivative is kind of a static version of the delta of an option, and convexity would be corresponding to the second derivative of the price with respect to the underlying, which is going to be called gamma of an option. Uh, the, the difference is that, that here, with options, as we are going to see, we are going to do dynamic hedging. We are going to rebalance all the time. Uh, here, we are thinking about static hedging. You just set up uh, your portfolio bonds uh, initially, and initially you make your uh, uh, sensitivities close to zero if you want to avoid risk of your payments in the future depending too much on the underlying interest rate. Okay, so that's called bond immunization. So all these things have special names, but the idea is always kind of uh, straightforward. So immunization means you, you set up a portfolio of bonds so that in order to hedge your future cash payments that have to be delivered at specified times, you use a portfolio of bonds that, uh, so that their total, if you include those cash payments and their bond payments, the total duration and total convexity are close to zero, and, or maybe equal to zero at least at the initial time. That, that is called immunization. Uh, and basically what you are doing is the uh, second order Taylor uh, approximation. Your, the change in your portfolio, here you can think of this as a single bond, but you can also think as, uh, as uh, the whole portfolio. If your portfolio is mostly driven by the changes in the, uh, in the yields, the interest rates, then the change in your portfolio can be approximated as, as the first derivative times change in yield plus one half second derivative a change in yield squared, right? That's just the uh, second order, uh, up to the second order Taylor approximation. And so if you set up, if you can keep uh, your, your duration close to zero and your convexity close to zero, then uh, the value of your portfolio is, is likely not to change very much. And if that's what you want, if you want a stable portfolio, you are a pension fund, you are an insurance company, uh, if you, that's what you want, then that's what you do. You, you keep your, uh, your duration and your convexity of the whole portfolio uh, small. Th this, however, works today, but then tomorrow if the yields change, your convexity and duration will also change and it's not going to be cl not necessarily close to zero anymore. Now you can just kind of redo it the next day and, and uh, make the new duration and you know, uh, rebalance your portfolio to get your new duration and new convexity close to zero. But really it's not, it's not a guarantee that this is self-financing or, or that it has a theoretically consistent sense uh, because you are, this, this model doesn't have multi-period aspect to it. It's really a static model because y, if you remember, when we define the yield of a bond, y is, uh, is a concept, deterministic concept, concept. There was nothing random about it. We didn't model it as a stochastic process. We just compute it today. 
and we know it today and then tomorrow we have to recompute it but we don't know how it evolves in time as a random process so so this modeling in terms of the yields is really a static concept you just look at the current yield today and you set up your convexity and duration today and that's it uh, if you want to change it tomorrow in a theoretically consistent time then you would have to have a model that models the yield uh, as, a, as a stochastic process and that's what we are going to do in chapter uh, in, in, uh, in the last uh, week and uh, but but this is kind of the classical way and this is the classical way but in which in which you are thinking about setting up this portfolio only at time zero and then uh, maybe not changing it okay that's really all i wanted to say about uh, convexity and duration it is just so classical terms that you should really if you haven't heard about them you should hear about them so when you read about it, uh, you know what it is about. That's it for this set of slides.